Hello and welcome to a very slightly different type of video by me. I've never really tried this before so I'm going to try it out and upload it and see how it works out. It's not the usual review or discussion or news that you're used to seeing but I wanted to share everything that I got in the past sort of week and a half, two weeks because I think it's really cool. I'm also used to having a script whenever I'm doing these videos so if I sound like I'm trailing off or anything I'll try and edit it out without making it look too jumpy. Before we get into today's video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing as it helps me get recommended to other people just like you and it really helps out the channel. I'm going to start by going over the consoles I've got. I got three and the first one I want to show is the Wii. Now I'm sure many of you are aware of what the Wii is and this is actually a launch model Wii that my brother got back in 2007 or 2000 I think it was 2007 that it came out he got it for his birthday around the launch and it's just nice to have it back there's actually a story behind my Wii and the second console I'm going to show you my GameCube yet again a launch GameCube used to belong to my brother and now Whenever I was younger, there was a rule in my house that if you wanted to get a new console, you had to get rid of an old console. So as my Wii and my GameCube were hand-me-downs from my brother, I had to give them to my cousins. And I didn't really care at the time because I was young and I was getting a PS Vita, I think, at the time. While these just sort of seemed like old consoles that I didn't really care about anymore. But recently I was thinking I kind of want the Wii and the GameCube for the channel, so all I had to do was ask for my GameCube and my Wii back and I got them. The third console I want to show to you is the PlayStation 2 and the thing is this is my PlayStation 2. It's a slim, hand me down for my brother yet again, but it does not read games and I really wanted to get into PS2 games again. So what I did was I went on eBay and it's a little bit different to the one I'm used to, quite a bit bigger, but I got a fat PS2 because I wanted to have both models and I may as well get the other one if I have this one. Obviously my old one is only for display purposes now, but it still looks good next to the fat one. It's kind of fun to compare the two. Because as you can see, the slim PS2 is a lot smaller. I actually have one of the older fat PS2s as well. You can tell it has a firewire port on the front of it which can link it to another ps2 but this function was never really used so sony actually just covered that up with a piece of plastic in the newer models the thing i love about these older consoles is even though my old ps2 broke i can still carry over my memory card and all my save games to a different playstation and it just feels like using the same playstation with modern consoles if your system breaks you lose your save files unless they're backed up to the cloud, which sometimes you just don't always do. That's the consoles out of the way. I just wanted to um, show off this controller that I got. It came with my PS2 bundle and I just thought it was kind of interesting. I've never actually seen one of these original PlayStation controllers. I've seen a DualShock 1, which is just the PS2 and a PS3 controller. But in person, I've never actually seen one of these. and. I thought it was interesting. Then I wanted to share my Wii Remote as well because my cousins actually lost the Wii Remote and all the games. So I got a Wii and all the wires but no controller and I had to buy this yesterday. It was about £20 which isn't too bad but I kind of didn't want to be buying a controller but I mean hey, it's nice to have. Alright so let's talk games because with my PS2 bundle I got an insane amount of games. I think it was 26 in total and then I picked one up yesterday. And I also picked up two Wii games yesterday. I'm going to get the Wii games out of the way first because there's only two of them and it's easier to do. Sonic and Black Knight. I just really loved this game whenever I was a child and I thought it would be funny to play it again. And I got it from a local, it's a UK second hand shop called CEX. And I got it for £6 which isn't terrible. Then I was also in the shop looking at the Wii games and... Far Cry on the Wii, I just couldn't pass that up for £2. It, I just think it'll be funny to be honest. I can't tell, is Far Cry Vengeance maybe the first one? But it goes over on the back, <laughs> you've got um, motion controls and it's making a, sort of making a deal out of the fact that it has motion controls. I just thought it was kind of funny and I can't wait to try it out, I just haven't had time yet. I'll just go over the PS2 game that didn't come with my bundle, Call of Duty 2. 
one pound or really go wrong with that it's a decent call of duty and i thought i, I may as well want some in there my ps2 bundle came with some loose discs and i've only tested one of them and i'm kind of surprised that it worked because they were just sort of thrown into the packaging and not very well covered but the one that i did test was this playstation 2 demo disc which i thought was really cool it just has some videos on it and a couple of games. I think Ratchet and Clank is the one that I tried out. There's a few different Ratchet and Clank levels on here. I just think it's a cool piece of history because, I don't know, demo discs are cool. Then Spider-Man for the original PlayStation 2 was thrown in there. Obviously I have no case and I don't really care if this one works because the only game that was with my GameCube is right here. It's the same game and it works on the GameCube and to be honest, it's not really a game you want to play. It's alright for what it is, but it's nowhere near as good as Spider-Man 2. The third game, which I've heard great things about, is Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Can't wait to try this one out. I've never actually played a Splinter Cell game, and I've just heard they're so good. People are really annoyed that Ubisoft haven't made another one, so I'll definitely be checking this one out. Then, the game that sticks out in my bundle is Doom for the original PlayStation. I only have one other original PlayStation game which is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone if you're from America and I don't know I just think it's nice to have random old games. I don't think I'll ever actually collect for the original PlayStation because I've never really been that into its games but if I can get the odd one here and there I'll definitely pick it up. Now I kind of had a system to um the PS2 games I got, I divided them in three piles. The games I'm not going to play, I just have no interest in. The games I might play and the games I definitely want to play. I'll start with this one, which... Okay, I've heard bad things about Crash of the Titans. It's not meant to be a very good Crash game. But the reason I point it out is because the disc wasn't in there. And I was kind of annoyed that the eBay seller had forgot the disc, but... It was actually just in the PlayStation and they had been testing it. It's also the only disc out of all of these that isn't really scratched and that's probably for a reason because it's Crash of the Titans. Then there was only three games that I definitely won't play. The Incredibles and The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. Look they may be fine games but movie tie-ins from this generation aren't exactly the most promising games and I'm just not too interested. I might check them out someday but for now they'll just sit on my shelf. Then the Lord of the Rings The Two Towers because this one's a duplicate and it's Platinum Hits version so the case doesn't look as nice so I'm not going to be playing this one unless the other disc doesn't work. Then the games I put in the maybe pile Star Wars Bounty Hunter. I'm not really a Star Wars fan but I have heard this is a good game so I might give it a chance but I mean it's kind of hard to enjoy an old game based on a series you're just not interested in. Then Splashdown it kind of looks like Wave Riders or Wave Racers. It's made by Atari which is interesting and I don't know it might not be my thing but I'll give it a chance eventually. It's just not at the top of my playlist. And then finally Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. I can't tell if this is trying to be like the PS1 Crash games but it just, it probably just doesn't live up to them. Now the biggest pile is the games that I actually plan on playing. And the first one is kind of funny one. It's Shadow the Hedgehog. Look, <laughs> this game gets memed a lot because it was 2005, we'll give the hedgehog guns. But I just find it funny. And I'm a Sonic fan, so... Unfortunately, I enjoy these games. The next three kind of tie together is the Ratchet and Clank trilogy game with my PS2, which is kind of nice. I have only played the, um, God, what year did it come out? Was it 2017 or 2016 reboot of uh, Ratchet and Clank? I might have said Crash Bandicoot a second there if I did. I am a Ratchet and Clank. But um, I can't wait to try out this trilogy because I know the reboot is this game but just really, really polished and changed up. So it'll be fun to see it in its original form. And yeah, I just like Ratchet and Clank in general from what I've seen, so I can't wait to try it out. Crazy Taxi is just one of those classic games. I've played the um, Simpsons version of it, um, but it'll be nice to actually play the original game. So yeah, I'll be checking this one out. It's a pity it's Platinum Hits. I don't like Platinum Hits cases, but what can you do? These ones go together as well. 
Quantum of Solace and 007 Nightfire. I have never played Nightfire, so I don't know what to expect from it. And I've played the HD version of Quantum of Solace, and I know this is a completely different version. But it'll be fun to try it out and see what the differences are from the HD version. Then we've got a couple of classics, Gran Turismo 3, A Spec, and I have only ever seen Platinum Hits versions of Gran Turismo 3 for whatever reason, but it'll be fun to play. And then Gran Turismo 4, one of the most graphically impressive games on the PS2, and this is the only PS2 game I've found with a white case, which I think is kind of interesting. And it is definitely a PlayStation case, not a Wii case, because it has the PlayStation memory card holder on it. But I've seen um, American copies of it, and they have a black case. I think all the American games have black cases, and some of, some of our Europe cases are black, and some of them are blue. It's kind of weird. Then we've got a movie tie-in game, The Godfather by EA, which is kind of funny that EA published this. I'll definitely be checking it out and doing a video on it just because, you know, it's kind of different, but I'll be checking it out. It it just sounds interesting. I've actually never seen the Godfather movies, so maybe I should watch them before I play the game. These three go together. We have Medal of Honor Rising Sun, Medal of Honor Frontline and Medal of Honor Vanguard. I've heard great things about Medal of Honor, but I never got the chance to play them. And now I have three of them. I don't know if there is any more. Actually, I've played the one on, I think... Is there one on the PSP? Or is that Brothers in Arms? I'm not too sure, but anyway, I'll be checking them out. Maybe do videos on the channel. Maybe sort of tie them all into one video and compare them to Call of Duty, the big red one. Then Contra, I've heard good things about Contra, but I don't know if it's my type of game, but I'll definitely give it a chance and see if it is. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. I just I've never really seen a Lord of the Rings movie I've watched Hobbit movies not Lord of the Rings so I guess we'll see if I enjoy this I mean it's a duplicate so maybe it's a good game if it's a common game I'll just have to see and finally Time Splitters yet again it's a game I've heard about but I've never actually played it I've heard good things about it so I'll definitely be trying it out to see if it's one of those hits that is worth making a video on I just have to wait for my capture card to come in the post, which is taking a while. But when it does, I'll be able to start covering PS2 game. Now, it is a HD capture card, and it's because I have this. This surprised me. It's just, it cost £5 on eBay, PS2 to HDMI, and it's just plug and play, literally. You put it into the back of your PS2 like this. It's kind of hard for you to see, I'm sorry. And it does stick out a little bit. If your PS2 is kind of snug in an entertainment unit, it does stick out a couple of inches in the back. And it is USB powered. You could have the plug beside your PS2 and power it from there. This looks a little bit messy, but you can jump it from the PS2's USB port and that works just fine. It gives a really nice picture at the back of it and it's a relatively cheap way of getting HDMI through your PS2. Another thing is it's also harder to stand it up like that. I don't want to damage the wire doing that. But yeah, it works out really well. But that's it for today's video guys. I really hope you enjoyed it because it was kind of different for me to try and do this but I may as well try it and see how it goes. If you enjoyed today's video please hit the like button and consider subscribing as it helps me get recommended to other people and my last video on consoles was the PSP video and it actually did surprisingly well so if any of you are watching this because you watched that last one thank you for watching another video it means a lot to me. If you want to stay up to date with the channel you can find me over on Twitter at Anthony J Gaming. I'm very active over there so why don't you say hi. You could also add me over on the PlayStation Network. I'm also Anthony J Gaming over there and finally I'm on Instagram as Anthony Joseph Gaming. That's all for today's video. Bye.